the beginning, I don't know that it's 0.75 amps this way. So I'm, I'm still thinking that it's this way. OK? Um, so then you would do 9 minus 10i1 minus 8i2. is equal to 0, right? This is the whole circuit. Now, the disadvantage of doing the whole circuit is because it doesn't give you I2 immediately. But it's not that bad because the left loop already gave us I1. So we can take that and plug it into that and then solve for I2. It should still give us the same answer. You see? So 10 times I1, that's going to be 15. OK? 9 minus 15 is negative 6. And then I2 is equal to negative 0.75. So you see, it doesn't matter what loop you choose. Sometimes when you're doing these loops, you can kind of think ahead of time. Which loop should I do so that I get the answer quicker? You know, you could choose the more efficient loop. <clears throat> now, the other way that this technique is used, this is called the Maxwell's loops. Let me show you here. It's a little different approach. Some of you might have seen this before, maybe seen this in an engineering class or whatever. But uh, in some cases, people do it the way that I've taught you, like I1 and then I1 minus I2 and I2. And then some other people prefer this method. They do like this. They say, let I1 be the current in the left loop, and then I2 is the current in the right loop. Like that. OK? So. Uh, this is known as the Maxwell's loops. It's the Maxwell, uh, Maxwell way of doing the same thing. Ma uh, the scientist Maxwell discovered this. So you could do 9 minus 10 I1. And then you go here, uh, 9 minus 10 I1 plus 6 is equal to 0. And then on the right loop, you would do uh, negative 6 minus, uh, what was this, 8, right? 8i2 uh, is equal to 0. So it would be like this. You know, you go like this. Now, since we don't have a resistor in the middle, again, uh, it's a quick solution. You just have the, this one, the left loop gives you the answer to I1. The right loop automatically gives you the answer to I2. So uh, you get um, OK. Now, uh, that's uh, the Maxwell's method. Now, uh, in the example two, when I solve a little different, I'll add a little more complication to it, and you can see how the two methods would uh, be a little bit different. Right now, you can't really tell how the two methods were different too much. OK, what if it, uh, once we get the current, how do we get the voltage across each resistor? Or we'll just multiply the current going through each resistor times the uh, resistance, right? So the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor is going to be 10 times I1. So it's going to be 15 volts. And voltage going through the uh, 8 ohm resistor is going to be 
8 times 1.75. Which is going to be uh, six volts, right? So right now I'm just taking the absolute value of the voltage. So 15 volts, six volts. And then if I want to know the power across each resistor, power across the 10 ohm resistor, you could either do I squared R or VI or V squared over R. It doesn't matter. I think the easiest one will just be VI here. Uh, 15 times 1.5 power across the power dissipated in the 8 ohm resistor is going to be 6 times 0.75, all right, which is going to be uh, 3 fourths, so um, 4 and a half, right? So the total power across the two resistors is um, 23 and 4, 27 watts. Right? So now, if we add uh, the battery, the power produced by the battery is the current going through the battery times the voltage of the battery. Well, here, it's kind of obvious that it's going to be the same because the current going through this battery, the, the, the current going through the 9-volt battery is... Um, so the power produced in the 9-volt battery is going to be the voltage of the 9-volt battery times the current going through the 9-volt battery, which is uh, 1.5. So that's, uh, let's see here. Voltage I1 is equal to 1.5, so that's going to be uh, 13 and a half. Power produced by the 6-volt battery. Oh, okay, yeah, here's what it is. Okay, power produced by the 9-volt battery is 9 times 1 and 13.5 watts, right? Power produced by the 6-volt battery is what? 6 times the current going through the 6-volt battery. Well, what's the current going through the 6-volt battery? It's I1 and then I2. So it's I1 minus I2. Right? Is the current going through the 6 volt battery? So that's why it was significant that the I2 came out negative. So that means the I1 minus uh, I2, the two negatives cancel. So the current going through the 6 volt battery, that's, um, that's going to be 1.5 minus negative. 0.75, so that's a 2.25, right? 6 times 2.25, that's going to be 12 and a quarter. 12, uh, that's 1.13 and a half, right? Ooh, nice. The two batteries are producing the same power. The, even the higher voltage, even though one of them is a higher voltage, they're producing the same power because the lower voltage battery is, has more current going through it. So now if you add these two, 27. And uh, power, power given off by the resistors is also 27. You see? Good. Now let's add this. 